This week we're looking at number five in the series on preparation for the end time. This one's entitled Christ in the Heavenly Sanctuary. And of course, as soon as you raise that subject, the perspective is, what do you think Christ is doing there in the heavenly sanctuary? Is he pleading with the Father, trying to convince him to save us, as sometimes we've tended to suggest, or is he there representing us and together with the Father and the Spirit, trying to convince the whole universe about the plan of salvation and the fact that we are indeed safe to save. So as we think about this very important subject this week, let's be very careful not to transpose some of our ideas that may not come from biblical truth, but come from our understanding of it. And to that end, I want to remind you that the heavenly sanctuary is the original, not the earthly sanctuary. All too often we make the heavenly sanctuary a copy of the earthly because that's what we know about. But as Hebrews very clearly says, it's the other way around. The earthly is a copy of the heavenly sanctuary. I want to read some quotes that are in the material for this time. They, that is the Israelites, had drifted so far away that they could not comprehend how God could live with them, being invisible. So God said, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That's Exodus 25 verse 8. The pillar of cloud above the tabernacle and God's visible presence manifested within helped the Israelites more easily to comprehend the real abiding presence of the Lord with them. And that was a very significant aspect of the sanctuary, that God truly was with his people. And we need to understand that today, which is why when Christ came, he was Emmanuel, God with us, in the same kind of way. And then there is a quote from John Wycliffe, the famous Bible translator. God is sovereign Lord of us all, and hence the relationship of man to God is direct and requires no intermediary. Any claim of church or priest to be a necessary medium must be repelled. He was rejecting the whole idea that you could only go to God through a priest. And sometimes we've tended to say the same thing, that you can only go to God through Jesus. But Jesus is God. Let's never forget that. There is no intermediary, no priest in between us and God. And Alphonsus Liguori continues that idea. Not only is there no need of an intermediary through whom he would want you to speak to him, but he finds his delight in having you treat with him personally and in all confidence. So the idea that there has to be somebody in between whether it's a priest or a saint or anyone else, is false. We talk to God directly. And the whole concept of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary is to help us to understand that. We don't need anybody in between. Jesus himself said very clearly, John 16, 25 and 26, I tell you now that you have no need and I will not plead the Father for you, because the Father already loves you himself. There is no need for me to plead the Father. And I think we need to take that message very much to heart, because we do not have Jesus pleading the Father. He says he will not do it, because the Father already loves us. And that is so significant. And it's, I love the fact that the disciples say, now you're speaking clearly. And they really appreciated that whole idea. Some Adam White comments as well for this time, which I think are very significant, that we need to understand what the whole sacrificial system, the sanctuary message is all about. This from Desire of Ages. As Jesus came into the temple, he took in the whole scene. He saw the unfair transactions. He saw the distress of the poor who thought that without the shedding of blood, there will be no forgiveness for their sins. Does God really need the blood of bulls and goats? Hebrews says no. What God does is win us back to trust in him through demonstrating how far he's willing to go to save us. That is the message of the heavenly sanctuary.